So this is a new way of doing SIBR. SIBR's been around for a long time. I mean, it's been, it's been around since the 80s. It's about $2.8 billion across the federal government that has to be spent on small businesses that are US owned. Right? And we define small businesses less than 500 employees, so that's actually pretty big. Uh, from the company perspective, from all these activities, we learned that they care about a couple of things a lot in working with us. We need to be fast, right? They can't wait two years for a contract. They need to have some way to engage with us in a meaningful way. They need to get access to our people, our problems, and our data, right? And that's uh, historically fairly difficult. And they need to have some kind of pathway to say, cool, I developed something that I know you like, but this actually has to transition to the warfighter in some way. Um, and those four things, if we can get them right, they're going to start telling their friends, they're going to tell their investors, they're going to tell everyone they know, go work with the Air Force because it worked for me. Right, and so far that's been working out fairly well. Um, I'm going to do less of the waxing poetic here and I'll talk about how SIBR works and how you guys can potentially engage with it. So it's a three-phase program. Uh, we run three cycles per year. So every four months we're doing another SIBR cohort. You will hear them called uh, .1, .2, and .3 uh, based on the year. So 19.1, .1, .2, and .3. Um, and the three phases are phase one for us, the way that we do this topic is they get $50,000, these companies, and three months to find their Air Force customer. And to even get into phase one, they have to show us that they have a commercial product that might be useful to the Air Force in some way, right? So they have this commercial product, it's doing well commercially, they think they have an Air Force customer, they go through phase one to uh, confirm that they have an Air Force customer. We have these memorandums that we created templates for that are meant to be signed by the Air Force customer and given to us that say, yep, I am this Air Force unit, this is what I do, I think this company might be useful to me. And the reason we do that is we don't want this technology to sit on the shelf, right? We wanna know there's actually an operational pull for it before we put any more then $50,000 for three months of time into it, right? If they do that, they're eligible for phase two, which is up to $1.5 million. Uh, and the purpose there is validate the thing that you said was useful is actually useful to us. Make the changes that are required to whatever their product or, or service is to make it useful to us, right? And that's up to 27 months. And the goal is phase three, which is kind of a misnomer, but essentially what phase three is, now the Air Force organizations can sole source buy from that, that company, right? So it makes it a little bit easier to get the product from them. Right, so that's kind of how the process works. One of the, the secret sauce, I think, to this program is typically SIBR <laughs> topics, there's like hundreds of them uh, every cycle, right? They tend to be very specific. I want a meta material that has these properties. I want an aircraft that can do X, Y, or Z. Or I want to investigate this science or basic research. What we did was create an open topic. So any commercial technology that might be useful to the Air Force can go to this single front door and come to work with us. The result is, in this last round, we had over 600 applications. And oh, by the way, Matthew Scott is running that round. So we, uh, this is 20 times the max applications to SIBR ever before this project. And, and Matthew's running it. So I love you, man. I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, but so, so the result is we have a very massive pipeline uh, of companies coming through. And so you may see the impacts of this too, because a lot of times when a company is in a phase one looking for their Air Force customer, they don't know who to reach out to. We, we've been trying to have convening events to help them find their customer, but in many cases they call the PA shops at the base, right? So you might be the first stop to route them somewhere to their people. So the messaging that I want to get out to the airmen is, look, you've got problems. A lot of times you don't have money to solve these problems. We're a big pot of money that can help. Um, so kind of follow this uh, SIBR program closely, and if there's a company that meets their needs, fill out that memorandum, uh, and we can get them on contract very quickly. Uh, average award time is less than 30 days. If you have a problem for which you don't know if there's a company, but you want to drive the pipeline, so you, you want to drive companies to apply to solve your problem, we have what are called operator or user needs that we collect beforehand and say, hey, look, real operators have these real problems. This is outside of the requirements process. We will post that to the open topic and say, any company can apply with any solution, but if you solve one of these user needs or these operator needs, you know there's a customer already built in. So it's a way you can guide the pipeline a little bit too.